Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to wrap up all the books I read for the Newts Readathon in August. The Newts are like the second half of the Magical Readathon. You do your owls in April and then based on the results of your owls, you sit your Newts in August. And this year there were career tracks introduced, so I aimed to become a librarian, which I achieved, and my stretch goal, and my very big stretch goal was Alchemist, which I read a couple of books for, but I'd not come anywhere near achieving that one. Nevertheless, I am very happy that I at least completed one career, even if it was a pretty easy one. So let's get started on wrapping up all these things. I think I have 10 books to talk about, and since some of them I read close to a month ago, you know, before I was on vacation, before Worldcon happened, forgive me if I don't have too much to say about them now. For Librarian, I needed an O in Ancient Ruins, an E in Defense Against the Dark Arts, and an E in History of Magic. So for Ancient Ruins, for my A level, I read Solitaire by Kelly Eskridge. This is a science fiction novel set in kind of the near future. I think that basically a world government has been installed and uh, they've basically taken the first children born in the first minute of the new government's existence and elevated them to become the, the chosen leaders for the future. And those children are called Hopes. The main character of the story is a woman named Jackal Segura. She is the Hope of Co Island. And at the beginning of the story, during an argument with her mother, her mother lets slip that Jackal is not actually a Hope. But now that she knows she's technically a fake Hope, it really shakes her confidence and she's just not doing very well. Um, then there is a massive accident which results in the deaths of hundreds of people including Jackal's closest friends, like her entire social group dies, and because of the circumstances Jackal is accused of this mass murder. Co Island cuts ties with her, she's completely on her own, her life is destroyed, and really what this novel is about is her putting together her life again and figuring out who she actually is when, when all of her privilege, when her status, when all of her connections are stripped away. Who is Jackal really? I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I think I gave it five stars, and in particular the second half of it, I really, really loved. Um, Kelly Eskridge is Nicola Griffith's partner, and I wonder if that's something to do with the fact that I felt like this book felt a little bit like Nicola Griffith's work that I've read so far. I'm, I'm a big fan of Griffith's science fiction in particular, and I would definitely recommend Solitaire for people who enjoyed things like Ammonite or Slow River by Nicola Griffith. For my E-level in Ancient Runes, I read Idol by Kristen Callahan. This is the first book in a contemporary romance series about the members of a famous rock band and, you know, I guess the ladies they get together with. This is kind of a random read. I was suffering from serious jet lag and I was wide awake at 4 a.m. and I was watching a recent wrap-up from Kazen at Always Doing and she mentioned that this series is like one of her comfort reads and I was like, well, I'm just gonna go read the first book. It's available for immediate download from Overdrive. So I read Idol. I did not really like it though. I felt like it was a bit cruder than I want in romance and I did not like the two main characters that much. I did not feel any chemistry in the story and I just... no, it wasn't my kind of romance at all. But I gave it a, a shot and it did what it needed to do, which is entertain me in the wee hours of the morning when I couldn't sleep. For my O level in Ancient Runes, I read The Broken Sword by Paul Anderson. This is a 1950s fantasy novel that's kind of like blending together Norse mythology with British myths, um, elves, changelings, trolls. For one, extremely grim, dark tale of revenge. An elvish lord steals a human child and leaves a changeling in his place, and that changeling then goes on, spurred by a witch's curse, to utterly destroy the family he was raised in and the human child raised with the elves uh, falls in love with his own sister. And it's, it's incredibly dark. Everybody dies, bad things happen, there's a lot of rape, there's incest. It was also quite well told. I was very much surprised that 
I I thought that Anderson nailed the the language. It felt like he was telling an ancient story with a lot of the vocabulary you would find in ancient tales. It wasn't as ham-handed as I thought it was going to be for being so old. So I didn't enjoy reading it because, like I said, it's depressing as hell and I don't really enjoy reading lots of stories where basically women are there to be raped or to sleep with men for their own safety, basically. And that is a lot of this story for the women. I'm glad I read it mainly because I never read anything by Paul Anderson before and I think I'll definitely have to check out some of his science fiction novels now. He was incredibly prolific so I have a lot of choice um, and see if I like them as much for like the storytelling and the writing as I did this one. For my A-level in Defense Against the Dark Arts, I read To Hold the Bridge by Garth Nix. This is a short story collection, and I read this at the very beginning of August. I don't remember much about it, except I thought most of it was okay. It sticks in my mind there were quite a few stories about vampires that were not necessarily my thing, but at least one of them was quite interesting. It was mostly set in a like very religious cult community. Um, and the ending of it surprised me. Uh, but my favorite thing from this was definitely the title story, which is the only Old Kingdom story in this. I think it is either a novelette or a no novella. It's, it's pretty long, and I did enjoy that a lot. I kind of wish that it was a novel length because I would totally re read that. It would have been very interesting. So yeah, quite a mixed bag. Glad I finally read it because this book has been sitting on my shelf for years. Um, but really the only thing in it that I think is super attention getting is the Old Kingdom story. For my E-level in Defense Against the Dark Arts, I needed to read pretty much a random book from my TBR, and I just grabbed a book that I had at hand, and that was Shul Aru and the Girl from the Other Side, Volume 1 by Nagabe. I went on and I read Volumes 2 and 3 after that, not for the readathon, but I thought I'd talk about all of them um, at the same time, because they're the first three volumes, the beginning of a series. Um, so this series is about a little girl, uh, Shiva, who has been taking care of like this monster called an outsider. Um, his name is Teacher. Um, it's very mysterious about exactly why people are interested in Shiva. Um, basically if outsiders touch humans then the humans become cursed and they become outsiders and people think that Shiva was cursed. She was abandoned and Teacher found her but now they are looking for her again. Um, teacher also is a bit mysterious. He does not seem to be like the other outsiders and he doesn't necessarily know what other outsiders know. Um, he just wants to protect this little girl that he found abandoned. I love the relationship between Teacher and Shiva. It is the sweetest, most wholesome thing ever. Like, yeah, like I want answers to the questions, but also I could probably read a lot of them just playing house together and having tea parties because it is, it is adorable. I also really enjoy the artwork in this. Um, I think the character design for um, Teacher is awesome. I really enjoy the way that all the outsiders are designed. It's a little bit creepy, but also really cool. Um, I really like the art style. I'm usually not super fond of very sketchy art styles, but this just really, really works for me. So I'm so glad that I picked this series up. I need more. I really, really need more. <laughs> Continuing on for my A-level in History of Magic, I read Last First Snow by Max Gladstone. I actually listened to this on audiobook while referring to my physical copy a couple of times as well. This is the fourth book in publication order in the craft sequence by Max Gladstone, and it's been a while since I've read any of the other books. Like, it's been years. Um, I love the world building of this universe. Um, it's got a little bit of like a steampunk alternate history vibe, just the way that the magic works. I think a lot of it is based on contract law. It's so interesting. I, I just, I want to know more about how the world works and what it's like to actually live there and everything. The plot of Last First Snow really didn't interest me that much. One of the characters is Timok. Am I, am I remembering his name correctly? And yeah, I'm just really not into that character. But it's it's basically about a neighborhood called the Skitter Sill in the gigantic city of Dresadio Lex fighting against gentrification. So there is kind of this 
protest growing in the streets of the Skitter Sill, and Elaine from like the the attorney's firm is brought in to mediate and like negotiate a deal between the the Skitter Sill representatives, the King in Red, and that other dude whose name I can never remember. While I find the legal wranglings in this world to be interesting, the part where Tamak is basically a high priest of um, a sacrificial religion but isn't doing human sacrifices anymore and how he's basically, you know, chosen by the people of the Skitter Cell to represent them and everything. I just did not care about that at all. I did not really like his, you know, this position of authority has been thrust upon me, oh, whoa, uh, type of thing, and then what happens with his family. <clears throat> anyway, um, very well written, a very well constructed world and plot. Uh, just the events of this one didn't interest me all that much. And for my E level in History of Magic, I read The Orphans of Raspe by Lois Master Bujold. This is the seventh and newest Penric and Desdemona novella um, set in her World of the Five Gods. And it is set after the events of The Prisoner of Limnos, so it's pretty far into the events of the series. I'm not going to talk about this one very much. Uh, but this particular one has Penric captured by pirates, and then taking under his wing two young orphaned girls that he wants to bring to safety so they're not sold into slavery. Um, so mainly this was interesting given that uh, Penric's life has turned a bit more domestic in the later novellas. Um, seeing him interact with children, which are so obviously kind of of the age to be like his children or like he might be thinking about having children. Um, that was that was pretty interesting. Um, otherwise, I don't have too much to say that wouldn't be like spoilers probably. Um, this was not my absolute favorite in the series. It was a good adventure. I think I would have liked it even more if Nykus had been in it, but it's mainly just Penric by himself for most of the novella without many of these supporting characters that I really enjoy. Actually, I think I really did miss a lot of supporting characters in this one. Like, I do love seeing whatever Penric gets up to and all of his internal dialogue with Desdemona, but man, I did miss Nykus and, um, that like assassin guard dude, I can never remember his name. He was really awesome too, and he doesn't appear at all. Then I read an additional three books that were meant for my alchemist track, though I don't think I finished reading any of the subject areas for that. So for my A-level in Arithmancy, I read The Lesson by Cadwell Turnbull. This is a debut science fiction novel about uh, basically an alien invasion that lands in the Virgin Islands. I thought the setting of this was really cool. I've never read any novel set in the Virgin Islands before, so just that was interesting, um, that it's not the U.S. Thank you. <laughs> and the aliens don't choose to land in a, a really big, like, international cosmopolitan city. Um, so mainly I enjoyed the premise of this, the aliens that arrive that seem to be mostly peaceful, um, the mis very mysterious emissary who isn't really accepted by her own people but isn't really accepted by humans either. And the big sticking point is that though the aliens are helpful in some ways. They have a policy of complete and utter retaliation for even the smallest of offenses, which means that people die, children have died for, you know, simple taunts in the street or things like that. The aliens have no in-between. They go from zero to a thousand immediately, basically. Um, so yeah, it ended up that this story felt a little bit more like a family drama to me, which I didn't enjoy quite as much. Um, you have multiple members of like these two families that are basically neighbors and over the years as the children grow up, you know, how are their lives shaped by aliens inhabiting, well, the islands that they live in. Um, so I think I wanted some more answers about what the aliens were up to, what the ambassador was doing, because um, that was really, really interesting, but it was far less into the family dynamics. 
but otherwise, I thought it was quite a solid debut novel. For my E-level and arithmancy, I read The Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I love this book. It was so good. I loved the main character so much. She just completely made this story work for me. So this book is set in 1920s Mexico, and a young woman who's kind of in a Cinderella role, let's say, um, accidentally releases the Mayan god of death from a chest in her grandfather's room when everybody has left, um, and she becomes bound to this god of death and must go with him on a quest for him to retrieve various parts of himself that have been stolen as he attempts to regain his power and topple his twin brother uh, from his throne and so that the god of death can take up his rightful place in the underworld. And the longer that he is attached to Cassiopeia, the human woman, the more human he becomes. It's It's got a romance in it, and it completely worked for me, and I was actually a bit surprised, but very, very pleased that it, that it worked for me the way it did. And I think what cinched it for me is that Cassiopeia is a very practical person who stays true to herself and really doesn't let other people manipulate her or change her mind for her. And she seems very aware even in the most emotional of circumstances that this god of death is not a human being and it's not right for him to necessarily become human even if that's maybe what her heart wants. Um, I just, I, I enjoyed the story so much. It was told very well, it was pretty briskly paced, it didn't seem to drag in any places for me. And then the ending was just so bittersweet and exactly what I wanted to happen. It didn't take the really easy happily ever after way out. So good. I want to reread this book. I want to get my own copy of it because I have a feeling it's going to be one of my favorite books of the year. And lastly, for my A-level in Herbology, I read I Contain Multitudes by Ed Yong. I listened to this on audiobook and it is a nonfiction work on microbes and the microbiome. Basically, microbes permeate everything, including our own bodies, and there is growing evidence that maintaining our own healthy microbiomes is very, very important for human health. So this is a topic that I was kind of aware of because it's been in the news more recently, probably from articles that Ed Yong himself has written, and I, I've read some of those, uh, but I really never read anything on the topic before. Um, it turns out this has a lot of like overlap with genetics, and actually the first part of this book covers all of the same topics and, and some of the same researchers as The Tangled Tree by David Quammen, which I had just read before. That book is about horizontal gene transfer, which is comes up um, in I Contain Multitudes as well. Um, so there was way more overlap there with genetics than I expected, and I enjoy reading about that. So on the whole, this was really interesting and very informative. It got me thinking a lot more about like my own health <laughs> and how important it is that you like eat certain things and avoid antibiotics and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really good. It was very well written. It seemed to me like it was also very well researched and I wish that Ed Yong had more books out that I could read because I would be on them in a heartbeat. Those are all the books that I read for the newts in August. Not too bad, especially considering that I was on vacation and sick for a bunch of the month. I did achieve a goodly number of books, let's say. So let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Leave me a comment down below, and I'll be back soon with probably more wrap-ups as I have other books that didn't count for the readathon that I also need to talk about. So until then, bye.